one. Welcome back to the Scorecard Centre. It's Tim and Jacko, and today we're looking at how to progress using the tools in our locker. So make sure you've clicked to subscribe, and then we're going to get into the lesson how to use these six tools. Progressing in calisthenics can be a real challenge because sometimes you're just not strong enough to move to the next more advanced progression. So you've got to find ways in which you can dial it back so you can train at a level which is appropriate to your current level of development. Yeah, there's nothing funny about it, Tim, so I don't know why you're about to start laughing, but <laughs> in, cali in the traditional weight training, it can be quite easy. If you're not strong enough to use the 10 kilo dumbbells where you just don't pick those up or you put them back down, you pick up the eights or the sevens. In calisthenics, we just have to think outside the box a little bit, use our brain, and we're gonna help you out uh, how to understand to do that. So we can just manipulate the exercise and, and uh, your body to be able to um, work to your strength and ability levels. The assistance tool then, this is using something like a rubber band is one example where it's gonna help you to assist you or give you some support and some help on the way up in with the example we're gonna give now uh, where Tim is going to jump in um, for the pull-up so he might not be strong enough to do a pull-up yet and then the band is going to help him to work uh, to have the strength to be able to work all the way to the top with great technique and good control he could turn that into a muscle-up if um, he was working on those as well and then you could the assistance could be like a partner helping you or you could be holding on to a ring whilst you do a pistol squat or again we could use the band to work um, some back lever progressions to help you with that Tool number two in the locker is eccentrics. And then we're going to use eccentrics a lot in our training because sometimes you're just not strong enough to pull through the full range of movement from, for example, a bottom position of a pull-up or what we're going to look at in this exercise is a dip. So you can't push out of the bottom. So just by training the lowering phase of movement, we can actually build up more global strength within the muscle. So Jacko lowers into the bottom portion of the dip. He's then going to put his feet down on the floor. He stands back up and then starts the movement again. Ultimately, training like this is going to build that basic strength and all, all after a while, what we're going to find is that we can actually push out from the bottom up as a starting point of the movement, rather than having to focus on that, just that lower phase, we'll be able to complete the whole thing. Eccentrics also work really well for our handstand push-ups up against the wall. We can use them for flag lowers if we're training towards a horizontal flag position. We can start at the top and lower down. And we've also got great options in the muscle up, particularly during that transition phase. We can drop down from the, the high dip position through the transition, slowly controlling that as we hit that bottom range. The most important thing to remember about all of these is that we're making sure that we're hitting five second eccentrics on all of those. So it should take you five seconds to complete that movement, always under control always with great technique. Okay, so the third tool in the locker is the wet week or the weighted tool, or it really is just an increased resistance tool. So we're gonna use weight to make this harder. I assume, Tim, you've got what, the 50 kilos, is it? What have you got there? Oh, 50, 50, 15. He can do it, he could do it, just picked an easy one, didn't you, right? So what he's gonna do is we're using the weight to, uh, to make it harder, so he's having to actually produce an awful lot more force than his body weight is needed for. So if he's wanting to be able to do, muscle-ups are a good example of this, then he wants to be able to produce force very fast, a lot of it, so he's gonna use the extra additional weight from that um, to help him build up enough strength for that. It could be used with a weighted vest. You could do the same things with um, in dips, or you could also um, use a resistance band to provide more resistance in some pushing actions, like in a push-up. So tool number four in the locker is isometrics and these work really well both in quite specific movements like our lever progressions but also in our basic strength like pull-ups and I'm going to get Jacko to give us a quick demo. So if you're struggling to pull through the full range on a pull-up, one of the things that isometric can help with is to develop strength above and below the point at which we're actually going to real hold that static point at. So you can see Jacko's not moving, that's the nature of isometric. We want to hold that for about 10 seconds and if we can do between four and six sets we're really starting to rack up some nice time under 10 tension that builds that strength and it's going to help us to be able to complete the full movement by ourselves through um, the full range without having to pause at any point. The other options that we've got on these, work, as I say, work really well for levers. We can look at a back lever um, progressions and a tuck position in those and also a tuck planche position are great isometric exercises to help you build towards that final movement. So the fifth tool in the locker is um, levers and angles. And here Tim's using a bodyweight row to give us a good illustration of how we can change the angle to make something easier. And as an engineering student myself, Tim, uh, this is one of my favorite tools in the locker. What class degree you get? I got a first class in a, in a master's of engineering. Anyway, so um, 
So him is in his normal body weight row position. He's working and building up some nice strength there. But if he's struggling, he wants to make it easier for himself. All he needs to do is walk his feet further back. So the angle he's at is now more uh, close to vertical. So he's higher up and that's going to require less strength than in that original position we showed you. If he wanted to make it harder because he starts to get really good, he walks his feet much further forward. Now, rather than being more vertical, he's actually now more horizontal. He's nearly parallel to the floor. And then the force required here to drive himself up is going to be an awful lot more. We can use angles as well for things like handstand push-ups where we can take our push-up position, we can have our hands higher up on a box to make it easier, or we can raise our feet up progressively so we can go from that horizontal position and in handstand it becomes more difficult when we get more vertical. With the lever's point of view, we can change the lever length, which would be um, we could bend our knee and our human flag, and therefore we'd only have one leg straight, so the force required to hold that position is going to be easier with one leg bent. Tool number six in the locker is stability, and this is one that's maybe lesser known within calisthenics. The principle though being is that we can make an exercise more difficult or easier by changing the stability requirements. So if we make the environment that we're training in more stable, it becomes easier. If we make it less stable, there's more of a neurological demand. The body has to find ways to stabilize and that makes it more difficult. The rings is a great example because they move around. There is no real stable point, so we have to do all of that stability work here in the shoulders and on well, the body. There we go. So Jacko jumps up, he can create a nice stable position. What you might find when you do this first is that the rings want to shake around a little bit and that's part of your, the process of your brain starting to understand that unstable environment. The alternative to this would be to do them on bars, which is more stable and therefore an easier progression. So you'll be able to probably do more reps on the bars than you'll be able to do on the rings. This bottom position that Jacko's dipping down into there is a really difficult point as well to hold that stability. Great progression to play around with. The other progressions that we have is we could change the surface that we're hand balancing on so we could use mats or a box to make that less stable we can also look at a wall handstand um, by using the wall as a, as a point of support with the foot against the wall to be able to create more stable foundations and therefore take out some of the instability that you would have if the wall wasn't there and then finally we would have the flag variation and using a stability ball to hold that flag position it's actually a really nice movement pattern exercise as well but having the, the, the ball to support you gives a load of really good proprioception um, stimulation into the shoulders whilst you perform your human flag. So those are the six tools that we use to change and progress our calisthenics training when we feel like we need to make a, a smaller step because the next big jump is just a bit too difficult. So those work for loads of different exercises. There's a real creative side of using the locker tools to be able to, to pick whatever it is that you're working on, apply the right tool and find that little, little stepping stone onto your next progression. Put those in with some consistency, you're not going to be far away from nailing the ultimate goal that you're working towards. Yeah, so sometimes it's you have to think a little bit about it, that's not a bad thing. So start thinking about your training, start using some of these tools. If you haven't yet clicked subscribe, make sure you do that, that's over there. If you haven't got our free beginner's guide, make sure you click that, that is down there. And if you haven't seen one of our other tutorials about how to progress, that's up there. Until next time. Class dismissed.